and stopping the pet industry from going to the dogs. A new veterinary council to be set up to raise standards and practices of the profession. It will also provide more regulation on the pet sector. And for more on this story, we're joined by Dr. Chow Pao Ting. He's president of the Singapore Veterinary Association and co-founder of the Atlas Veterinary Clinic and Surgery. Uh, Dr. Chow, what are one of the one or two more common procedures that should be carried out by vets, but are increasingly being carried out by untrained professionals? So there's a clear need for a list of specific tasks that can only be done by a trained veterinary professional. Uh, some common tasks that uh, please, for example, be at this moment in time, like uh, non-anesthesia dentistry done by maybe some groomers or lay people. Another one is also uh, interesting trend is like uh, animal communicators ma making medical diagnosis. Dr. Chow, you mentioned uh, animal communicators. These are people who claim to be able to have some sort of insight into what an animal is thinking. Is that correct? Uh, yes, uh, like um, beyond just observing the behavior of the animal, um, the, them having the ability to really talk and communicate or understand the feelings of the animal, which I guess um, what we're trying to safeguard and prevent is making medical diagnosis. My like part is like we wouldn't ask a kid to diagnose his or her own medical condition. All right. If, so for example, well, let's carry on with this particular example. A med, a, a, an animal communicator makes a medical diagnosis uh, and I go and see the animal communicator. What should I be looking out for when it's, I sense this is a danger signal? This is a diagnosis that I cannot take seriously. I, I guess um, it's, not un it's actually an uncommon example, but I guess talk about, hey, talk about at the end of the day, the current veterinary uh, industry is already regulated. There is regulation, but then there are still some loopholes here and there. That's one example that I can think of that uh, um, we need to leave specific tasks to the professionals, right? And then, um, the aspects okay, we are trained. Let me, let me, let me reframe that question. Uh, so uh, when anyone gives advice on an animal, what should be the yes. sign, the flags that go off to tell me this is something I should not take seriously. I need to be seeing a real vet mm -hmm. for this problem. Uh, yes, uh, that's a good question. So then next thing is that like um, it's common to take advice. So let's say if, if I go to my hairdresser, I decide, oh, by the way, I feel some soreness on my shoulder. But at the end of the day, if you do want to treat a medical disease, uh, for me, if I am some concerns, I go and see my human doctor. So it is definitely the same uh, for pets as well or, or animals in general. Uh, any serious medical symptoms that you are concerned about, definitely uh, you should consult a veterinarian. Dr. Chow, what should some of the priorities of the council be right now? There has been in focus the issue of the mental health as an example of, of vets because many of them work very long hours. Uh, resources are stretched right now. We know that there's been a shortage of, of vets over the pandemic due to fewer uh, students graduating uh, because of the pandemic disruptions. Uh, which issues are you focusing on at the council now? So I guess both are actually very much related when uh, the veterinary workforce uh, face compassion fatigue uh, and face various mental health stress and they, they leave the industry that further contributes to the manpower shortage. So uh, the priority of the veterinary council is uh, maintaining and elevating veterinary standards, right? And that includes uh, building a more robust and resilient uh, veterinary workforce. All right, Dr. Chow, uh, Singapore has no vet program of its own uh, to serve as a current benchmark. So, so for example, in the medical pro yes. uh, uh, profession, you've got the Singapore Medical Council, the SMC. Uh, for yourself, for your particular profession, where are we in terms of uh, having a benchmark, a council, a set of regulations to govern everything that goes on in this particular industry? The, the, the good thing for us is that at this point in time, we, we do have a regulatory body, which is ABS. So what we're looking for is like uh, 
2.0 version. And then uh, the main thing is like look at other countries like Australia, UK, uh, there's already established the veterinary boards with long histories. And then the advantage for us is that we don't need to reinvent the wheel. We are able to adapt best practices overseas and then we adapt it to suit our local context. And of course, uh, at this moment in time, we are also trying to learn from our SMC counterparts as well. Oh, thanks so much for that. Dr. Chow Hao Ting, President, Singapore Veterinary Association and co-founder of the Atlas Veterinary Clinic and Surgery. Thanks for joining us this evening.